So how I have compensated, I am a good list. I got lists, I'll put it on the back of something. Post-its were my friend, I've got things posted. Um, and then the joy of scratching up that I've done it, because I love to accomplish things. Uh, in school, and actually I really discovered it here, when I would always take notes, as I mentioned earlier, to stay focused, I noticed that when we had our mind board meetings and scientists would come and speak, and talk about their great projects that we could go and talk. I would take notes. Well, if you looked at my notes prior to the medication, there would be, they weren't finished sentences. Because the person moved on, I may not have gotten it all. And that did create an anxiety. I have found that what I'm able to do, so having identified those, one is the post-its and keeping to-do lists. Two is note-taking, and which forces me to not go off and think of other things, but to try and stay with what the person is saying. And three is being self-aware that I may be talking and then forget what I wanted to say. So I will, I'm registering in my head, uh-oh, I'm, I'm a little lost. I may throw out some words that kind of, I don't go uh-uh-uh, but I may, well, and just kind of say words that kind of giving myself time to kind of catch up where I am. And then owning it, because sometimes I don't know. And so if I'm having a lunch meeting and people are coming in, you know, you're, you start having a conversation and then would you like more iced tea or would you like ice and do you want something to, I can easily get distracted. But being aware of that and not being afraid to say, you know, I'm, well, that thought has just left me, but I'm sure it'll come back and I'm okay and I'll let you know. That is empowering as a person because then it's like, and, or I have said, well, you know, I do have ADHD and it's not with me, but I'll, it will come back. And it does come back. When you worry that it's not coming, it, re there, it won't. But if you can kind of let it go, it's so interesting how it creeps back in and you're like, yeah, I got this. Oh, what I was, oh, excuse me. Or I'll let him finish and say, you know, I had forgotten what I was going to say, but I remember, and then go on. But you have to be self-aware that of what's going on with you or what can distract you, and not be. I have found that no one has heard me say that I have ADHD, and then they run away. Um, actually, can become an interesting point. They, I get asked about it. I recognize others struggling with it that haven't been labeled that way. Um, people have found that, oh yes, that's what I go through. Well, and then I really love to say is that it doesn't mean that your brain isn't working, it's just not working effectively. And, you know, or I'll hear, um, about with children and their education. Uh, I learned a long time ago. Um, a doctor said to me, no child wants to come to school and say, I'm going to underachieve today. So when teachers say, oh, they're just not working to their potential, no, that means there is something going on. So don't be afraid of the medication or if things can help you. I only wish I had been diagnosed early. I think I had a mediocre education um, that has made me aware, especially in writing, I don't really write well. And it's something I'll also, what I do to deal with that is be very straight about what my skill set is. So I may say, I, you know what, I'm not a great writer. I can talk up a storm, but I can't write. So, well, you started off, I'll be happy to work with it. Or I'll be happy to present, you do the writing. To not set myself up to fail. And just use my strengths to move forward and be effective.